Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God. All praises to the Most High. Hope you're doing blessed with power, peace, love, and a sound mind, good health, and strength. With that being said, let me get into the lesson, the lesson God had me put together explaining his vineyard and his laborers. So, here we go. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire laborers in his vineyard. So God, basically he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, right? It's like a man that had a house and he hired laborers in his vineyard. So we're talking about God's vineyard and his laborers, all right? Now, Jacob, the book of Jacob, chapter 6, verse 3. And how blessed are they who have labored diligently in his vineyard and how cursed are they who shall be cast out into their own place and the world shall be burned with fire right so blessed are the people who have labored in god's vineyard who do the work of the lord remember people have their different duties god doesn't call everyone to do the same thing right everyone's blessed with something different everyone has a different talent and ability to their several ability to carry out the work that God ordained, ordained them and anointed them to do. So blessed are the people who diligently labored in God's vineyard. And he says, how cursed are they who shall be cast out into their own place, who haven't labored at all in God's vineyard, in their creator's vineyard, right? So Doctrine and Covenants chapter 43, verse 28. Wherefore labor ye, labor ye in my vineyard, for the last time for the last time call upon the inhabitants of the earth so god tells you to labor labor in his vineyard right now alma chapter 28 verse 14 and thus we see the great call of diligence of men to labor in his in the vineyard of the lord and thus we see the great reason of sorrow and also of rejoicing sorrow because of death and destruction among men and joy because of the light of Christ onto life. Now, the first book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9. For we are laborers together with God, yeah? Ye are God's husbandry, husbandry, ye are God's building. So we must labor in God's in God's house and God's work. Now, because you're blessed when you do that you're blessed now doctrine and covenants chapter 21 verse 9 for behold i will bless all those who labor in my vineyard so your work is not in vain laboring for god in whatever he called you up to do for behold i will bless all those who labor in my vineyard with a mighty blessing and they shall believe on his words which are given him through me by the comforter which manifests that Christ was crucified by sinful men for the sins of the world. Yeah, for the remissions of sins onto the concrete heart. The con We know that God loves a concrete heart. He loves when people are humble, right? Isaiah 57 and 15. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabits inter eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. And, you know, God is near to people who are of a broken heart and people who have a contrite spirit and people who are humble. Because when you're humble, we already know what a lesson God exalts and uplifts those who are humble. He brings them to honor, right? The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. So, back into God's vineyard, right? This is about Christ. So John, so we're going to read the book of John chapter 15, a couple of precepts. I am the true vine, says Christ. So I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. So that also goes with, if, if Christ says, if they don't bear fruit, he takes it away, right? And it says, blessed are those who labor in God's vineyard, but 
the other ones? What does it say? Up here. In the book of Jacob chapter 3. And how blessed are they who have labored diligently in his vineyard. And how cursed are they who shall be cast out into their own place. And the world shall be burned with fire. Why? Because they didn't labor in God's vineyard. Remember he separates the wheats from the tares. Every man's work shall be known by fire. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. So back to. So John chapter 15 verse 2 Every branch in me that bears not fruit He takes away And every branch that bears fruit He purges it That it may bring forth more fruit Ye are clean through the word Which I have spoken unto you Abide in me And I in you As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself Because a branch can't bear fruit Without a vine So Christ told you he's the vine and when you stay with him, you're going to bear fruit and you'll get even more fruit. But can a, can, can a branch grow without a vine? No, it can't bear any fruit. So he says, except you, it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For, for without me, you can do nothing. Because he died for the sins of the world. Right? If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater Love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So you see, when you do God's work, when you're a laborer in God's work, you know, you forgive, you're working for other people, you're saving souls, you're, you're helping people break free from the works of the enemy. You're saving souls, you forgive Everybody who ever harmed you because you know that forgiveness, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. And you know when you do God's work, you, you, you're you not holding any grudges against anyone. You're not holding any hate because you're living in the love of Christ. Like Christ didn't have any hate for God's creation. He died for wicked men and wicked women. Wicked creation, he died for all. And he was sinless. With, because of his love his love for God and his love for God's creation and when you work for God that is how your heart is going to be it's going to want to help people it's going to want to save people from the things that you already overcome that's love love is an action word we went through that love is indeed so you are put no greater love has no man than this that he may, may lay down his life for his friend yeah, Christ laid down his life for God's creation and he calls us his friends. And when you do God's work, you're doing the same thing because you're not going to be hating people. You'd rather be saving them to get them back to God, to reconcile them back to God. And we know the commandment is to love one another, not hate one another. And to forgive one another, right? So Doctrine and Covenants chapter 20 verse 24 verse 19. For thou art called to prune my vineyard with a mighty pruning. Yeah, even for the last time. Yeah, and also all those whom thou hast ordained. And they shall do even according to this pattern. Amen. So you're ordained for your labor. 
A lot of people want to take on positions in God's vineyard that they weren't appointed to. Does the other branch on the next side of the tree say that's longer than the other branch? Oh, you're a better branch than me? Or do they both grow and bear fruit? So your calling is different from somebody else's. You can't compare your calling with someone else's. What God has ordained you to do with somebody else. Seven brothers, seven different minds. God's not going to call you all to do the same thing. You don't all think the same. You weren't all made the same. God put his blueprint on you, how he made you, right? Alma chapter 13, verse 23. And they are made known unto us in plain terms that we may understand that we cannot err. And this because of our being wanderers in a strange land. Therefore, we are thus highly favored for we have these glad titans to declare unto us in all parts of our vineyard so even if you know when you do God's work there comes there comes a lot of you know if you do God's work you know what comes with doing God's work there's battles there's spiritual warfare there's you know false allegations there's people wanting to do things to you without cause right now one Corinthian, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, your work, what you do for God, is not in vain. Even every single tear you cry, it's in his bottle. You understand? So if he counts even your tears and puts it in this bottle, what, what do you think about the work that you do, that you did for the Father? That's, that's not going to go. That's not in vain. You're actually proving your love. The first book of Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love, you're laboring in faith. You're laboring in love. That he told us to love one another. You're doing a, a great job. Don't ever feel like your work that you're doing for God is going unnoticed or it won't be rewarded. Because we're going to get into the about that as well. And patient of hope in the Lord Christ in the sight of God and our Father. So remember your work and your labor of love now the first book of corinthians chapter 4 verse 12 and labor working with our own hands being rivaled we bless so you know as i said doing god's work people will rival you people will try you people will come for you even if you're not doing nothing right being persecuted people even suffering but what does God do? He delivers you out of it all because those things that come to you, you have to learn to be stronger. You have to overcome. How are you going to be stronger if you don't overcome anything? If you never went through any battles? Right? Now, Galatians chapter 1 verse 29 Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Yeah, some people even try to strive with you. That's why in the Psalms it says, Lord, fight against those who fight against me and strive with those who strive with me. Because when you're doing God's work, people will try you. People will rival you. People will persecute you. People even want you to suffer and you ain't do nothing to them. People will strive with you. But this is the working of your faith. This is also God trying you if you're going to keep his commandments and his word, right? Which works in you mightily. This brings you strength. This brings you might. And it brings you power. For the kingdom of God is in power. But you have to go through these tests to have that kind of power. As I said, with great power comes great responsibility. Isaiah 65 and 23. 
they shall not labor in vain nor bring forth trouble so you're not going to bring forth trouble your labor is not in vain your the labor that you're doing is not going to bring you trouble but it people will try you but that's a test god chesses your heart and your reins right for they are the seed of the blessed of the lord and their offspring with them so not only does God bless you for laboring in your vineyard, your offspring as well? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come on to me, all ye that are that labor and have and are heavy laden. I will give you rest because, you know, the work of God. It's a lot of work. You can't keep sometimes you can't keep up with God. You can't not sometimes you can't. Even me, when he's teaching me and I'm learning with him, he's giving me so much different things to learn. And then it's, I can't keep up with God. Nobody can. <laughs> now, the first book of Nephi, chapter 15, verse 15. And then at that day, will they not rejoice and give praise unto the, their everlasting God, their rock and their salvation? Yeah. At that day, will they not receive the strength and nourishment from the true vine? So didn't I say these things will strengthen you with God's work? But there's going to be people you know already, they've rejected God. They don't even rejoice to give praise or thanks to God. They don't even care about the salvation. So they won't receive the strength and nourishment from the true vine. Christ. Yeah, will they not come onto the true fold of God? Now, Alma chapter 16 and 17. That they might not be hardened against the word. That they might not be unbelieving and go on to destruction. But that they might receive the word with joy. As a branch be grafted into the true vine. That they might enter into the rest of the Lord their God. So people need to not be unbelieving remember the fearful and the unbelieving they cast them in the fire just even back to the story with talents he the fear he was fearful and unbelieving he didn't do his the work he labored not at all and then they go on to destruction but they might receive the word of god with joy and as a branch be grafted into the true vine that they might enter into the rest of the Lord their God. That's why he says, come. What does Christ say to you? This is the rest. This talks about the true vine, right? That they might enter into the rest of the Lord their God. And then in Matthew, it confirms what Alma said. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, God wants to explain about the good vine. I mean, those who labor, who are good, and people who don't labor at all. Now, Isaiah 51 and 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved the song of my beloved touching his vineyard. So Isaiah is saying, God is his well-beloved. He's going to sing him a song touching his vineyard. Because Isaiah labored in God's vineyard that's why he has the book my well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill and he fenced it and gathered out of the stones thereof and planted it with the choice vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein and he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes now listen to this this is like the good and evil. I, Jeremiah 2 and 21. Yet have I planted thee a noble vine. So God planted his creation a noble vine. Because remember when he made creation. He said it was good. And he blessed it. And he rested on the seventh day. So nothing was bad when God made his creation. Everything was good. Everything was blessed. Go back to Genesis. And the Lord blessed them. And he said it was good, and he rested on the seventh day. Creation was blessed and good, so God could have rested on the seventh day. There was nothing wicked. There was nothing evil. There was nothing bad. 
there was nothing unfruitful. Jeremiah 2 and 21, that I have planted thee a noble vine, woolly, a right seed. How then are thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? People turning away from God to do their own work. But he told you he made you a noble vine and a right seed. Yeah, all his creation. Jeremiah 12 and 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. So he's saying people who haven't managed his word were not true laborers. There's good pastors and there was ones who destroyed God's vineyard by teaching his people. Now, Revelations 2 and 2. I know thy works and thy labor, the real laborers of God, and, the, and thy patience, and how that thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. So that's why it even goes to many pastors have destroyed God's vineyard, right? And he says, but those who do his work, he says he knows your works. Christ told you he knows your works and your labor and your patience. And those who are who, who, who you found liars, that they're not really doing God's work. Wolves in sheep's clothing, basically. Now John 15 and 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch that is withered, and men gather him gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned now this is talk about the good the good fine right and the bad he wanted to talk about with Jeremiah and the figs Jeremiah chapter 24 and 2 one basket have very good figs even like the figs that are first ripe and the other basket have very naughty figs which could not be eaten they were so bad then the Lord said unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me. Thus says the Lord God, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of, captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. I will set my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. So the good the good people and the children of Judah out of that tribe, he's going to build, bring them back to their land. He's going to build them up. He's not going to pull them down, and he's going to plant them, and he's not going to pluck them up. Remember, as the children of Israel be as the sand of a sea, only a remnant's going to return to God. And these will come to God with their whole heart. And I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Now, Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bear forth evil fruit. So a good tree can't bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Every man's work is going to be tried by fire. And that's why it goes back. He says if a man... John 15 and 6, if a man abide not in me, he's cast forth as a branch that is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now, Matthew chapter 20, verse 8. So when even was come the Lord of the vineyard, said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from last unto the first. So you will get your laborer's reward doing God's work. Your work is not in vain. 
you will profit from doing God's work from God. Remember, God teaches you how to profit. Don't just be vain in your own opinion that, oh, you're going to be going in the world and doing your own thing to profit. For the work that you do, your labor in love, there's a sure reward. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Luke 10 and 7. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. The first book of Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. For the scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treads out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. So your labor in the Lord, you're, you're worthy of your reward. You will, God will reward you for doing your work for him, your labor of love, your work for his kingdom. Don't be discouraged and don't be dismayed. Your reward is great. Psalms chapter 128 verse 2 For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands Happy shall thou be And it shall be well with thee Proverbs chapter 10 and 16 Why did it do this? Sorry The labor of the, the, labor of the righteous tends to life The fruit of the wicked to sin Remember evil An evil tree can bring forth good fruit So the fruit of the wicked is sin The labor of of the righteous tends to life you're, when you're doing the labor of God what are you what are you exercising what are you even gaining eternal life Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23 in all labor there is profit in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips tend only to punery the first book of Timothy chapter 5 verse 17 let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So elderly people that rule well, they're counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So that's even a blessing that comes with being a laborer in God as being an elder being you know an elder person they get double honor for their work now proverbs chapter 21 verse 25 the desire of the slothful kills him for he his hands refuse to labor psalms chapter 80 verse 14 return we beseech thee o god of it, uh, god of hosts look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine and the vineyard which thy right hand has planted, and the branch that thou has made strong for thyself. Praise God. Amen. So this is what God wanted to talk about. Don't be discouraged and don't be dismayed in your work for the Lord. Because you know there's things that come with it. Because God will not forget your work and your labor and love. And your reward is with him and we know that if you don't bear good fruit every tree that brings not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire so your work is not in vain what you're doing for God is not in vain don't worry about another person worry about yourself what you're doing make sure that you're doing the right Make sure you're not leading people astray with God's word. Make sure you're telling the truth as God taught you to teach it or whatever work God caused you to cause ordained you to be because not everybody is a teacher. There's a lot of work that goes with being a teacher of God. There's a lot of time you have to spend with God. There's a lot of learning. A teacher is constantly learning, constantly studying. So not everybody likes to constantly study and learn. Not everybody's called to be a teacher. Some are. Some are prophets. Remember, prophets are like a mouthpiece to God. They hear him. And then what did Isaiah say? He opens up my ears every morning. He spoke in Isaiah's ears. And Isaiah spoke what God told him to speak. He was a prophet. 
Remember, God used Daniel. Daniel was a seer. God spoke to him in dreams and visions, and he showed him many things. God uses you however he wants to use you. And, and I'm going to stop this right here with Doctrine and Covenants 21 and 9 again. For behold, I will bless all those who labor in my vineyard with a mighty blessing. So that so do not feel like your work is going unpunished. Stay blessed, beautiful people, and all praises to the Most High. Take care.